Hi, my name is Michael Oliver, and I'm the Solution Director for PTV Vision here at PTV Group. And there's something wrong with my car. I know there's something wrong because there is smoke pouring out of the back. And when I put my foot to the floor, the car is slow to respond. So I need to get it fixed. And the first thing I need to do is identify the symptoms. I've just done this, so now I need to form a diagnosis. Now, I'm certainly no mechanic, so I need to take my car to an expert. They will likely identify more symptoms that I hadn't even been aware of, and then tell me what is causing this, the diagnosis, and then suggest some treatment. And then I need to make a decision. Do I spend the 50 euros, pounds or, or dollars to uh, clean the filters and see if this solves the problem? Or do I invest more to replace the turbo? It's more likely to fix the, uh, the issue. Now this being a car, uh, I have the opportunity to, to try something and see if it works. But we cannot do this with a city. We're not talking about tens, hundreds or thousands of, of pounds or euros to fix the problem. We're talking about millions. But in, in a sense, cities are a little bit like cars in that they are a complex system of interrelated and, and moving parts. And like my car, cities can be broken. Cities can be broken because of congestion, meaning that people are, are wasting their time stuck in traffic jams when they could be doing much more useful things, much more enjoyable things, spending time with their families. And businesses are less productive because their workers are spending time stuck in traffic jams when they could be working and people are late for meetings, meaning that they're wasting people's time. Air quality issues in our cities mean that people's lives are being shortened. The planet is warming and people are dying on our roads. So what can we do? Well, we can follow the same three steps. We identify the symptoms, a diagnosis, and a treatment. Now, this is where the analogy with a car breaks down somewhat, uh, because unlike a car, with a city, you cannot just try something and see if it works, not when there's vast amounts of public money at stake. So instead, we can build a digital replica of our city, a computerized mathematical model, a transport model. And we can use this to identify symptoms, form a diagnosis, and propose treatment. So in terms of identifying symptoms, we can use the model to, to see where congestion is occurring and when. Of course, we know because we live in our cities, we work in our cities, uh, what is occurring, but the model gives us an holistic view of the entire city. We can use the model to identify accident and air quality hotspots. It can tell us where there is overcrowding on public transport, where journeys are unreliable. We can use the model to identify areas of deprivation in our cities. And if the economic growth, the economic potential of our city is being held back. And then we can use the model to help us to form a diagnosis. Of course, if we're talking about congestion, then it's likely to be because there are too many cars. But also it could be that there is a lack of, of sufficient, good quality public transport in our cities. It could be because of inefficient land use planning. If we have people a long way from where they need to go, then we're creating a need to travel. But if we can be smarter about how we plan the land uses of our cities, then we can minimize the need to travel at all. And when it comes to deprivation, we can use the model to identify if this is because of a lack of accessibility of people to jobs and services. We can identify if the economic growth of our cities is being held back because businesses are not connected. And then what about the treatment? Well, we can use the model to help us with this too. The model gives us a safe environment to test and inform and optimize decision-making. And what about these treatments? Well, as I mentioned, the potential treatments in a city, as you'll know, are very expensive. We could be talking about increased road capacity, new roads, wider roads, or more effective use of existing infrastructure. It could be decreasing road capacity, or restructuring these land uses to minimize the need to travel, or a new public transport system, or an enhanced existing system. Or more likely, it'll be a combination of all of these things. We can use the model to evaluate the viability of a solution before implementing it in real life. And we can do that based, of, based on the model of the city of today. But what about the city of tomorrow? 
Will the city tomorrow or in one year's time or in 10, 20 years time have the same symptoms that we observe today? Or will they have improved? Will some of them have gone away? Will they be worse or perhaps moved due to the relocation of businesses, due to population growth and urbanization? And what about e-mobility, the shared economy and autonomous vehicles? There is no point just solving the problems of today without considering the problems of tomorrow. And this is the essence of transport modeling. This is why we do transport modeling and transport planning. It's due to the need to plan for the future and making informed decisions. So it, they're very interesting times ahead, especially as we enter the autonomous revolution and the need to decarbonize our transport systems. We at PTV will continue to work with the likes of the International Transport Forum, the World Bank and academia to pave the way for this future and provide transport planning and operational solutions to cities and governments to plan for the future and help them to make the most of the opportunities ahead. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.